Hello and welcome to the screencast on the basic building block of MATLAB, the vector. In this screencast we're going to learn what a vector is, how MATLAB works with vectors, three ways of creating vectors in MATLAB, and how we can use vectors in mathematical operations. So just what is a vector? Well in MATLAB the term vector refers to just a list of numbers. In MATLAB we enclose such a list of numbers in square brackets and separate the numbers with commas or spaces. So for example, this is a vector in MATLAB, and so is this. That is, notice the numbers don't have to come in order necessarily. Even this is considered a vector in MATLAB, and even this an empty vector. So in MATLAB, basically everything is thought of as a vector. Even when you enter in a single number into MATLAB, it treats it as a vector with one entry. So let's go over to MATLAB now and work with some vectors. So in MATLAB, we can enter vectors by just entering it in the entries manually. For example, typing a square bracket and then just typing the numbers that I want in it. Hit enter, and it's defined, and you can see this over here in the workplace as well, along with its values. Or we can also give vectors a variable name. For example, I could assign values to equal the vector I just created. And now that is stored as values. You might be wondering why we would ever want to have vectors around in the first place. Well, there are a lot of good answers to that question. For one thing, many of the mathematical functions in MATLAB are vectorized, meaning they will operate on an entire list of numbers at a time. For example, if I wanted to take the square root of each of the numbers in the values vector I just made, I can just type square root of values, and MATLAB finds all six square roots simultaneously. It's helpful to think of a vector as something like a row or a column in a spreadsheet. It's just a list of numbers to which we apply a formula to all entries at the same time. This comes up really big when we start talking about plotting functions, as we're going to see in another screencast. So in order to make a vector, I can just type out the entries by hand if I want. But if I have a large vector in mind, this can get really tedious. And so there are a couple of other ways of creating vectors that we can use. Now, if I want to create a vector it has a definite starting value and a definite ending value, and I want the values in between to be the same distance apart, I can create a vector as follows. For example, let's suppose I want to create a vector that starts at 0, ends at 5, and whose entries are one unit apart. In other words, it's just the values vector I saw above. Well, the syntax I can use is this. I type in the starting value, then a colon, and then I type in the step size that I want. That is the distance I want each value to be apart. In that case, that's 1 then another colon, and then type in the ending value, and hit enter, and that creates the same vector as above. If I want to create a vector that starts at 0 and stops at 5, but whose entries are a quarter of a unit apart, all I have to do is change the step size in the middle by typing 0, colon, 0 0.25, or a quarter, colon, 5, and I create a vector that has that properties that I want it. So when I want to create a vector of equally spaced numbers, and I'm not so picky about how many numbers I create, the step size way of doing it is nice. On the other hand, a lot of times I might want to create a vector, and I have in mind the number of entries I want to have, and not so much the step size. For example, if I wanted a 10-entry vector that starts at 0 and ends at 5, then the step size actually turns out to be 5 elevenths. And that step size calculation is annoying. I don't really even care about it. I just want 10 entries. There's a way around this as well, and it uses a command called linspace. So to create that vector that starts at 0, ends at 5, and has 10 entries, the syntax I'd use is, is this, linspace, for linear space, parenthesis, type in the starting value, then the ending value, and then the number of entries you want total. And I hit enter, and as you can see, this creates a vector that has 10 entries total, starts at 0, and ends at 5. It's actually possible to leave off that third argument, uh, and MATLAB will create a vector that starts and stops at the values you specify, and automatically puts a default of 100 values in the vector. So now that we know how to make vectors, we can work with them mathematically. We've already discussed vectorized math functions. For example, suppose I want to see the cosines of the angles 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and so on. So I can create a vector, for example, called angles. And uh, that vector, I want to space those angle values apart by pi over 4. I want to start at 0, colon, pi over 4 is my step size, and my ending value might be 2 times pi and it creates that vector of angles that are equally spaced. And then if I want to know the cosines, I would just type cosine cos angles, and all those cosines are calculated at once. We can also operate with vectors as if they were numbers in many ways. For example, let's create the vector x equals negative 3 colon 1 3. This is going to create a vector called x that starts at 3 
negative 3, ends at positive 3, and all the entries are spaced apart by one unit. In other words, it's this. So I can take this vector and multiply it by a number, for example, 4 times x, and it multiplies each entry by 4. I can divide a vector by a number, like so, or I can even add or subtract the number. x plus 4, for example, will add 4 to each entry of the vector. I do have to be careful, though, and this is really important. If I use any operation that involves doing something with a vector, like squaring. Now, if I type in x squared here, uh, I'm going to get an error message. Now, what I really mean here, probably, is I want to take all the entries in x and square them. So we get a vector that looks like 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. That is what's called element-wise operation. Whenever I want to perform element-wise operation, I need to put a period in front of whatever operator I'm using. For example, to square all the entries in x, I would have to type x period squared, and that would do what I want it to do. So the period, the dot, refers to element-wise operation, and this comes up especially often when performing exponentiation, like x cubed, for example, would have to be done as so, or if I'm ever dividing by a vector, for example, 1 divided by x would give me an error message. If I want to divide uh, 1 by each entry of x, I would have to type 1 period divide by x, and that would do what I wanted to do. Notice the infinity symbol here when I divide uh, 1 by 0. So let's recap what we've learned. First of all, we learned that a vector in MATLAB language is just a comma or space separated list of numbers that's enclosed in square brackets. We think of it like a row or a column of a spreadsheet. We've also learned that most MATLAB functions, mathematical functions, are vectorized and can operate on entire vectors all at the same time, which is very handy. We've also learned there's three ways of creating vectors in MATLAB, assigning them to variable names. We can type out the entries manually and enclose them in square brackets. We can use the a colon step size colon b syntax or the lin space command to create a vector. And we've also learned about element-wise operation, and especially shows up when we are exponentiating or dividing by a vector. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.